One, two. In the early 1950s, television was just beginning to spread across the country as the most important new technological development for the American consumer. About this same time, Pat Buford and his wife Lucille sold radio station KHBG in Oak Mulgee, Oklahoma, and moved to McAllen, Texas with their three small boys. Shortly after their move to McAllen, Mr. Buford passed away, leaving Lucille alone with her small children. Undaunted, Lucille Buford decided to pick up the pieces and start over. She telephoned a friend in Tyler, Texas at radio station KGKB. She'd worked there after her graduation from the School of Journalism at the University of Missouri. She learned the station was for sale and also that a new television channel allocation had been made in Tyler, Channel 7. Lucille believed strongly that fate was intervening in her life and placing new opportunities in her path. She believed seven was her lucky number. The station was to be located in East Texas near Henderson, her childhood home. Lucille's decision to roll the dice and buy radio station KGKB centered around the idea of getting back into broadcasting and applying for Channel 7's license. The opportunities were not without obstacles, particularly for a woman on her own back in the 1950s. In those days, it was necessary for a woman to be declared femme soul before she could enter into a binding contract. There were many businessmen in Tyler waiting to see this woman fail in her attempts to build the new TV station. But Lucille Buford was determined to succeed and work tirelessly. She brought in Marshall Pengra from Oak Ridge, Tennessee to manage her radio station and assembled a staff of technicians to build the television station once the license was granted. An old airfield on Tyler's eastern edge was converted into the television station. The large aircraft hangar was ideal for the new studio, and there was plenty of room to erect a 500-foot transmitting tower. On October 9th, the station was ready to sign on the air. But Lucille didn't want to tempt fate with her gamble. Others before her had attempted to operate an East Texas television station, KETX, and failed. So she decided a better sign-on date for her new venture would be a multiple of seven. She was gambling on everything she had, after all, and so she chose October 14, 1954 as the official sign-on date. After signing on, station KLTV, the L stood for Lucille, began operating in earnest. The station provided programming from all three networks, CBS, NBC, and Dumont, and provided East Texas viewers with local news and information. Early programs included live studio wrestling on Saturday nights, an early afternoon children's program, and live country western music shows, the Hayride Jamboree, and the Fowler Playboys, sponsored by Fowler Furniture. That program featured local talent, including Johnny Horton and Tommy Sams, as well as big-name talent like Jim Reeves and George Jones and Johnny Paycheck. Ralph Coleman was the first news anchor. Kip Kippenbrock was the station's weatherman in the early years. John Lennox did sports. Floyd Wagstaff was a frequent guest during the sports segment, often coming into the studio for live interviews during the news broadcast. In the early 60s, the engineers and staff constructed the first mobile transmitting bus in East Texas and produced live coverage of local sporting events from Tyler Junior College and the first telecast of the annual Rose Parade. KLTV became the first television station in the country to have live coverage from inside a courtroom during the Billy Solestis trial in 1962. From humble beginnings, KLTV has grown into the most dominant communications force in East Texas, serving viewers with news and information, as well as entertainment programming, and by delivering a large audience to local advertisers. It all happened because of the vision of Lucille Ross Buford, an East Texas girl who pioneered the East Texas broadcasting industry as one of the first women in the country to build a television station. And the work Lucille and everyone else did in that little airport hangar planted the seeds for what would become East Texas' most trusted and reliable news and weather source. But as Tyler started to grow, so did KLTV. And it wasn't long before we found ourselves in need of a new location right in the heart of the city we call home. 
The next chapter begins in January of 1995, when the move to our new downtown location was first considered. Nobody had an accurate idea of how complicated such a move would be. In 1924, Tyler Bank and Trust's original location was on the opposite side of Tyler's downtown square. Then in 1947, the bank moved to its 105 West Ferguson location, where the station is now housed. The bank underwent a major remodeling project in 1959, with other design changes in 1977, and again in 1981. Eventually, Tyler Bank and Trust moved out of their downtown home. And it's here that the KLTV you know really began. The renovation wasn't easy, turning a multi-story bank built for security into a fully functioning television station. In fact, it took more than a year to fully plan due to the fact that everything had to be completed without interrupting KLTV's on-air programming. And once the move began in earnest, it turned into as much a technical challenge as it was physical, calling for the installation of more than three miles of video cable and more than six miles of audio cable. But the team worked tirelessly around the clock, and once all the dust had finally settled, KLTV had found its new permanent home. A lot of things have changed over the years, but one thing has and always will stay the same, and that's our commitment to using every tool at our disposal to bringing our viewers the best, most reliable product possible. A huge thanks to Lane for that look back on how we got here. And if you've ever been inside our downtown Tyler studios, you know the history of this building is still very much a part of what we do every day. But as important as the building is, at the end of the day, it's just drywall and insulation, and in some cases, heavy vault doors. When we come back, we're gonna take a look at some of the people you've been gracious enough to allow into your homes over the past 70 years. KLTV's longtime chief meteorologist, Mark Skirto, recently retired from the station. How long did he work here? That answer and more when we come back to the KLTV 70th Anniversary Special. Totally Unleashed with Therapet. Join us on October 26th at the W.T. Brookshire Center in Tyler for a night of fun, including music by the Big Daddy Band, dancing, auctions, games, dinner, and drinks. Plus, get up close and personal with the true stars of the night, the Therapet Dogs. It's your support that helps these truly remarkable animals motivate, comfort, and inspire. Learn more at therapet.org and mark your calendars for the Therapet Totally Unleashed Gala, October 26th at 6.30 p.m. We'll see you there. East 
Texas for 70 years. You're watching KLTV.